Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel and the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel, which is where you are right now. Uh, this is the WCW Saturday Night uh, Review Series for the 29th of April, 1995. We've only got a couple of these left, uh, but we're going to move on to WCW Worldwide, and there's at least a couple dozen of those that you can check out. Uh, that's upcoming, so be on the lookout for that. Nasty Boys, who have been embroiled mainly in the uh, WCW Tag Team Feud with Harlem Heat over the last several months, are up in an enhancement ch challenge match here. Uh, Irish Whip of uh, Sags into the corner. Uh, big uh, Splash in the corner, and Sags is, and uh, I'm sorry, Nobs is in control. Uh, punch kick basic stuff there nothing really worth writing home about at that point but at the same time a uh, hard shot into the process and uh, you know double teaming along the way basic stuff nothing to get terribly excited about but at the same time uh, Sags gets uh, ready and takes uh, out his adversary with a clothesline followed by the top rope uh, moves that we've come to know Hulk Hogan hotline is highlighted here as well, and then we move into a Vader enhancement challenge match. Vader, by this point, starting to fall. Al Phillips is his adversary for this particular day. Not exactly a worthwhile uh, opponent situation, but um, punch kick Vader with hard forearms and lays the man right wide open. Not really that impressive. Vader with a body slam and the Vader bomb. Uh, from the second rope on the inside, also manages to hit his uh, vertical suplexes and power bombs, challenging Hulk Hogan as he has defeated him not too terribly, or been defeated by him not too terribly long ago at the pay-per-view. Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage will be teaming up to face two-thirds of the uh, Faces of Fear at the Slambury pay-per-view, and uh, the idea there, and uh, they hype the Return of Great Muda to the area. Um, obviously, a big deal in the '80s. Not as big, not as big a deal here in the, uh, not as big a deal here in the, um, you know, mid '90s. But Muda does remain a major force in WCW for the next several years before the promotion actually. Uh, shuts down. He's back and forth several times over the next several years. Johnny B. Bad is here, and Johnny B. Bad is uh, facing off in an enhancement talent match. On again, off again with the television championship. Actually, he wins the U.S. championship same year here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, about a year, actually less than a year, uh, till he's let go. Um, kiss that don't miss, and uh, sunset flips shows a lot of athleticism does bad and of course the golden gloves boxer and he uses that as well to his advantage uh, the butcher is here kind of doing the baby face thing gets uh, taken down or kind of not a full turn but almost a turn gets taken down by uh, the enhancement talent gets body slammed and the like along the way not exactly a great Time to be Brutus Beefcake at this point in time, but uh, he manages to take things down pretty simply there. Beefcake um, manages to get the sleeper hold on and get a victory. Ming is up next in, in, in a uh, match here with uh, Marcus Bagwell. Bagwell been in the news as of late due to some personal issues. Uh, I believe this is part of the tease for the U.S. Championship Tournament that... Uh, is later held in uh, the Great American Bash, not too far away. But anyway, uh, Ming shifts his, shifts his weight, gets an advantage there. Uh, we see the um, issues between Big Bubba and Sting uh, highlighted in a highlight package. Kind of a step backward for Sting to be the face of WCW for several years. Now back to being in line for U.S. title. Uh, Dallas Page showing off Kimberly and claiming to have been a millionaire. He ends up becoming poor before getting on his babyface run. Then we see Brian Pillman uh, Sr. is here. He is 
in an enhancement match, still trying to find full things for him to do. Tie up in a abdominal stretch on the canvas, among other things with the enhancement talent cross body and some drop kicks by Pillman. Pillman again talking about wanting to get rid of Colonel Robert Parker and the idea of Parker being the reason that the Hollywood Blondes are no longer together is a subtle undertone there. Uh, then we go to the Enhancement Talent match. Kevin Sullivan, still the leader of what becomes the Dungeon of Doom, out and uh, does the double jump, double stomp on the chest of his opponent after several punches, kicks, and basic stuff. He still wants to eliminate Hulk Hogan from the wrestling world. He still wants to be a major force in WCW for sure. Alex Wright up next, and Alex Wright... Uh, is here in an enhancement match, basic match. They go to the outside, right claims after the match, after a top rope drop kick, among other things, and a cross body that he is in the best shape of his life and wants to be given an opportunity to do everything he possibly can to eliminate any doubt from the future. Ric Flair back in the ring, finally, after several points of contention. Uh, Anderson... Flair and Vader in an wait <coughs> in an enhancement match here. Uh, Flair back in the ring, just there to do the enhancement related work. Brad Armstrong and Tim Horner are the opponents here. I uh, wouldn't necessarily call that enhancement because they had been pushed the previous weeks before, but at the same time, in comparison to where Ric Flair has been. That's there, Vader on the outside of the ring, Flair and Anderson, the competitors in the in the bunch. Kind of a loose-fitting um, stable at the time. Not exactly worth writing home about by any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, Vader is uh, not willing to take too much of a backward step. Flair gets his uh, uh, jollies by clipping one of his adversaries from behind. In the leg, Anderson gets bounced around for a couple of minutes. Flair allows a hot tag to uh, Brad Armstrong. Armstrong fires back on Flair. There's actually a Georgia match, which I'd love to see again. I haven't seen it in 25 years, where he actually takes Flair to the limit. I believe either in Georgia or Memphis, one of the two. Very early in Brad Armstrong's career. Sends, arms, uh, sends Flair up and over with a backdrop. And then clears house on Anderson with a couple of drop kicks right under the chin. He gets crotched. Vader runs in, and eventually the Renegade runs in and goes up to Vader. And then we close the program with Hogan and Savage promising to eliminate Flair, Anderson, Vader, and all heels, all people that are evil. Uh, in any event, we'll be back with more right after this.